Hello and welcome to CS230. This is lecture 14 and lesson 3 and in this particular lesson we're going to look at building the physical implementation of our customer address logical model. Uh, in other words we're going to make a database using MySQL and um, a relational database using the model that we had earlier. So we're going to make some tables for customer, we're going to make some tables for address and we're going to build a table that represents the relationship between a customer and address to show how customers can keep physical shipping billing addresses and then um, and so forth. We're not going to worry about the audit um, tables at this point uh, because we just don't have time in this lesson, so they're short. Okay. And what's important to realize is that in order to build this database, we need to have a database server and we need to have some way of manipulating it. So I'm going to be using the remote mysql.com service and I'm going to, it, it provides PHP my admin tools in order to build the tables and the relationships. Now, so this one's mostly just to talk to on, on that. I mean, there's no theory really in this particular one, but what I want to do is I want to show you the connections that you have between the, you know, the key decisions that we made here in, in, in relation to the logical design and how they make their way into an actual table um, a design and structure. Okay, so um, I'm also going to give you the code to generate this as well if you want to do it yourself rather than working through the command. So you can just go to the PHP my admin, SQL, and just if the tables are, if you have a straight database with no tables, you can just run these commands and it'll do everything for you. And it's okay to do this, of course, you know, for learning purposes, but at some point you might have to do the, the work yourself, make your own design. And then, um, and of course, in other situations, you might be able to use a software tool that allows you to design these things. I did them, I just made these manually with, key, with Keynote. Um, but you could use that software to, um, to automatically assign the, the values and the attributes of each of these keys and then push it to a database design and it will be all done for you automatically. So we're just going to manually go through that process with PH, uh, PHP My Admin. So anyway, um, we're all, we're, um, we're going to look at, as we expect, we see a customer table, an address table, and a customer address table. And if I, if I switch over straight away here to my PHP my admin running on remote MySQL, you see I already have the three tables generated. And you can see that um, we can choose the customer, for example, and we can look at the structure of this particular one. And we can see that we have a customer ID and we've decided on the types here for the values for that. Um, uh, <clears throat> What's important to note as well is that we have something like a, a, a primary key and the alternative keys. How do we set all that up? Well, you can do it manually using the interface, but you should be able to see here that I do have some primary key set up. I do have alternate keys set up um, as well, and we can have a look at those using the actual code that we use to generate the table. So here's the create table command for the customer. I have a, an ID. It's not null. Um, <clears throat> This is the timestamp that was interesting for the audit. So we, 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 the, the type will be a timestamp and that every time we create a new uh, record, it automatically updates the, uh, the value to be the current timestamp. We set up the keys using the alter table command. I mean, and again, you do it manually using the, the interface over here if you wish, but you know, you could do it manually as well. Okay, so we're adding a primary key on customer ID and we're adding a unique key on the customer um, uh, an alternate key, really, which is uh, an index that's created on the email address, the mobile number, and here's a composite key, uh, composite index here on the first name, last name, and date of birth. And they should really make some connections to the kind of things we talked about in the earlier lessons. Okay, and um, I also mentioned that at one point we would be using a surrogate key. So what happens is in this situation is that we're automatically entering a record into the table and we're generating a, a customer ID based on the, the next available record. That's a surrogate key as the primary key and we're actually doing that and setting that up here. So we auto, it auto increments, uh, you know, based on whatever the previous um, the previous uh, record ID number was when we when we last entered something into the table. Okay, so if that, that handles that handles our um, customer data, I have the exact same for our address data. But what's more interesting, I guess, is that we have our customer address and that's a, real, a table that represents a relationship between those. So in this particular case then, customer address. Um, again, we're seeing that uh, let the structure here, we have a customer ID and address ID. Now these are foreign keys on the primary keys of the two other tables. And we've set that up here. You can look at the indexes and the keys. We can see it's all set up and available for us here. Um, and we can look at the relational view in PHP my admin, clicking through and see that I've 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 created these constraints um, as foreign key constraints. Okay. So I'm telling it that this constraint called address ID FK associates the address ID with the address ID in the address table. So it's not too bad. And the customer ID in this table is going to be in 
the customer ID in the customer table. And these are the constraints that are there. You can see they're, they're down here as well. And again, we do all of this using the alter table commands. <clears throat> if we explicitly want to produce the SQL. So I'm altering the table, I'm adding a key called customer ID, I'm telling it's this one here, and adding a key on the address ID. There's no hab. And here are some constraints that it's a foreign key and it references the address. So the foreign key for address ID references the, um, the address table and the address ID, okay? And we're getting restrictions here on whether we're allowed to have multiple copies and all that, uh, on delete, all that kind of stuff that's there as well. So, so all of this works for us. It's nice um, and we have it all, 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 all set up, ready to go. And we'll have a quick look at some of the data as well. So I've given some screenshots here of the, of the um, uh, PHP my admin usage if you're working through this lesson with the data so you can check and see that your table setups and look the same as, as as the ones that I've set up here already. Okay, so we'll notice that I have some data in my uh, customer table address uh, Lucas Connor um, has uh, one entry here. I've got uh, some data for him. So where did this come from? Okay, well, I I manually created all of these data and um, just for practice in my database and it's a good idea to do this. Okay, so um, so what I have here is I have uh, some sample rules about how the data I want to actually generate. And so I've got an air code, a town, and the air code corresponds to the town with some random bits in here, a random a street name, um, <clears throat> random a, a city, all that kind of stuff. So all of these are done. And then here's my command for inserting the data into the record. Again, I have some, uh, I have some address data, uh, customer data, and I have how we might actually add a customer's, um, say, Lucas Connor lives at this, you know, and here's the, the, the command to be able to set all that up as well. So I, I, I tend to manually work all of these commands uh, with the tables to be sure everything works before I automate the process. And speaking of automation, I also then like to generate some data um, because I'm lazy and um, so I've written some tools to generate some data for names and addresses. So for example, here's a little code, piece of code that I wrote in JavaScript that generates some random names. Okay, and it, here are the people that have generated. So here's some random names, random data that will fit with our table. They're all nice, I've got 20 of them. Um, and I've also generated <clears throat> those data as JSON, if I want to be able to manipulate them later with, with uh, um, a JSON type structure. And I've also automatically generated the SQL commands to be able to insert those data into my database. So for example, I could choose some of these data here and um, I could go back to my table and I could click on the SQL tab and say to myself, well, let's generate some data. So I could just put my data in here that I copied directly from generator, hit the go, the go button, and I've created all of these extra records from my database. And I can go back and browse and I've seen I have lots of data in these now in my, in my database table. And of course, I've written um, um, a similar program to generate addresses. Well, let's just, same thing again. I can just take all those data here and copy this and go to my address table. Address table, SQL. Generated some addresses, it looks good. Hit go and I've generated some new addresses, random addresses, and I can browse that table, and we can see the data is there. So it's easy to do this kind of work, it's not too bad. Okay, I recommend using this approach to, to, to make life easy for yourself, and always try to generate some data for testing purposes. And if you can generate the code automatically, that's fine. And then this code that you use here can be reused in your PHP and your Node.js, or, or your Node.js applications that you'll use a little bit later. And that's what we're gonna see in the next lesson. Thank you very much for watching.